Easy, Ironhide. Just kidding. I just wanted to show him my cannons. Welcome back Autobots, Decepticons, and everything in between to Tales of Production, the series where I take a look at the production of the various Transformers movies and tell you some interesting stories that went down. Today's is going to cover why Ironhide had a battle mask in many of his toys and supplemental media appearances, while in the film no such battle mask appeared. But before we jump into that, a quick word from our sponsor Warhammer Chaos and Conquest. For those of you who may not know, Warhammer Chaos and Conquest is the ultimate strategy and domination MMO mobile game. You can build up and train a powerful army by collecting these guys called Warlords. In the game you will find more than 30 demons and warriors of chaos. Having them as part of your army will increase your power and strength, and will help you protect your fortress and destroy your enemies. You can set up your army, level up and upgrade your warlords with special equipment and skills in order to dominate the Warhammer universe. To achieve this, you're going to need to find some true allies. Join forces and take over the old world. These alliances will offer you protection to your citadel, speed up your constructions, and help you retrieve a ton of additional benefits. Your objective is to bring chaos in the old world. For you to succeed, you're going to need to devote to the Chaos Gods. You can complete the battle and defense rituals so you can boost your attack and defense. In addition to participating in side quests, special events, and daily challenges to conquer other Chaos armies and claim all the rewards for yourself. Don't forget to collect Warp Stone and other resources to achieve your goals and build your base faster. Engage in the realm battle and feel the taste of the real-time strategy MMO experience. Climb the leaderboard, claim the Chaos Allegiant Master title, and become the ever-chosen you were always destined to be. The Warhammer Online Universe is waiting just for you. The game is available on iOS, Android, and Windows. You can download it now by clicking the link in the description below, or by scanning the QR code on the top left of your screen. Now, as we all know, in the Michael Bay Transformers films, Ironhide never had a battle mask. Yet despite this, many of his toys and supplemental media for the Transformers movies have depicted him wearing this mask. Which, funny enough, a lot of fans have mistaken this mask as either a design error or thought it was supposed to be a big nose. So then, what is the origin of this mask if it never appeared in any of the Bay films? And why does it continue to show up from time to time whenever a Bay vs. Ironhide figure is released? Well, we can thank a piece of concept art for that. One of the earliest pieces of concept art floating around the web for Ironhide is this one by Ben Proctor, who is the brainiac behind the majority of the robot designs in the first film. In his Ironhide concept art, we can see that he has a battle mask. However, as we know, that never made it into the films. The reason for this is likely because of a lesser known concept art also done by Proctor. And as we can see here, that is a face that we all know and love. Unfortunately, at this point in time, there isn't a higher resolution of this concept art depicting Ironhide's unmasked face. However, the 2007 Lunchables Pocket Transformers toys has our back, since one of the figures you could get was of Ironhide, and the stickers used for his toy had the unmasked concept art on it. Furthermore, this unmasked concept art would make it onto another toy. That being the Ironhide figure from the Transformers 3D Battle card game. So with that said, we know that movie accurate concept art of Ironhide is out there. So then why does some of his toys and supplemental media have the mask? Well, I believe this is due to Hasbro's control artwork. For those of you who may not know, control art is the artwork Hasbro provides to companies who want to license their brands. It's basically a packet of artwork that shows how they want their characters to be represented. Think of all the t-shirts, stickers, pillowcases, coloring books, etc. that all use the same designs and various poses for the Transformers characters. If we take a look at the Transformers 2007 control art for Ironhide, he has a mask in all of them. My theory on why this is the case is because I believe that the designers who made these renders use early concept art as a reference. I can prove this since in all of Starscream's renders he has a tannish color to him, which isn't accurate to the film but accurate to the concept art. Furthermore, Megatron's control art has his original head, which is also accurate to the concept art but not to the film. However, his control art would be redone to have the correct head that was present in the film. Lastly, Optimus Prime's control art has these flames by his abdomen, which isn't at all accurate to the film but accurate to the concept art. So with that said, I think that proves that the designers of the control art use concept art as a reference, thus explaining why Ironhide has a mask in all of his control art. 
His Revenge of the Fallen control art would also sport a mask, since Hasbro would reuse and repose the model for a multitude of Ironhide merchandise. Now from here, I want to switch gears and talk about the toys and extended media that depict Ironhide having a mask. Starting off with some merchandise from Transformers 2007, there's surprisingly only one, that being his Titanium's figure. And interestingly enough, his wave mate Jazz was also modeled after some early concept art as well, since Jazz has his pistol that appeared in the concept art. Ironhide's Titanium's figure would be repacked into a box set with Deep Desert Brawl for Transformers Revenge of the Fallen as a Toys R Us exclusive. Despite him being designated as Off-Road Ironhide, the figure is exactly the same as the 2007 one. Now moving on to some supplemental media appearances that depict Ironhide with a mask, there are quite a few. Most notably in Transformers The Game. In the Wii and PS2 version of the game, the textures were rendered in low resolution due to the limitations of those consoles. And when playing as Ironhide, his character model would have a mask. However, if you played the game on PS3, Xbox 360, or PC, the game would be rendered in high resolution since those platforms had more processing power. And when playing as Ironhide, his character model would not have a mask. Now despite all this, for some unknown reason, every version of the game had cutscenes that alternated between animations that either use high or low res models. Lastly, the game used the 3D models from the control art in order to create its cinematic intro and outro, thus explaining why Ironhide has a mask on in them. Moving on from Transformers the game, Ironhide would also sport a mask in both the highly underrated Transformers Autobots and Decepticons DS games. He would also sport a mask in many of the stories from the I Can Read books, in addition to the Titan movie comics. Lastly, in the Transformers movie adaptation comic, Ironhide is depicted with a mask when the final battle has concluded. However, every panel despite this one doesn't depict him with a mask. From here, let's move on to Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. And this time around, Ironhide has a lot more figures that sport a mask. The first one being his Recon Ironhide toy, which was an extensive retool of the 2007 Voyager Ironhide figure. The toy of Recon Ironhide would be turned into a CGI model for the hit cartoon Transformers Cyber Missions. Recon Ironhide would later be repainted into Off-Road Ironhide, and would be put into a box set with a repainted Deluxe Class Bone Crusher from the first movie's toy line, as part of a Walmart exclusive called the Fury of Bone Crusher. The last Revenge of the Fallen figure to sport a mask would be the Hunt for the Decepticons Deluxe Ironhide figure. Now, technically, he doesn't have a mask since the sculpt is of his nose. However, it has been painted to resemble the mask, hence why I have put this figure on this list. Takara Tomy would release this Ironhide mold under their Autobot Alliance line, giving it a more movie-accurate paint job. This mold of Ironhide would later be released in the Dark of the Moon Mission to Earth the Scan series subline as a Toys R Us exclusive. It would be repainted and remolded to represent him trans-scanning his vehicle mode. Lastly, this mold would be used in Takara Tomy's Transformers movie The Best line to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the live-action film series. This deco is closest to the CGI model since now his nose is painted silver instead of black. Now moving on to some Revenge of the Fallen supplemental media appearances that depicted Ironhide with a mask, the Transformers Revenge of the Fallen movie adaptation, Tales of the Fallen issue 2, Alliance, and Nefarious comics all have Ironhide drawn with a mask. Furthermore, the Revenge of the Fallen I Can Read books also has Ironhide wearing a mask in many of its stories, as well as many of the Revenge of the Fallen Titan movie comics. In addition to this, the Transformers Revenge of the Fallen Autobots and Decepticons DS games also depicted Ironhide with a mask. Now with Revenge of the Fallen squared off, let's move on to Transformers Dark of the Moon. And here, Ironhide has a handful of figures that sport a mask. The first one being the MechTech Voyager class Ironhide. Like his Hunt for the Decepticons version, his nose is painted black to resemble the mask. This mold would be repainted into a G1-inspired color scheme called Cannon Force Ironhide. This repaint substitutes the black on his nose for silver, which better shows the movie-accurate sculpting that the black paint covered up. The last Ironhide figure to sport an actual mask would be his leader class figure. When either the button on his chest or the lever on the back side of his head were pressed, 
His mask would move down and his eyes would flash green while he said a couple of phrases. Like his Voyager Ironhide counterpart, he would be repainted into a G1-inspired color scheme. Interestingly enough, this repaint was only exclusive to Canada and Asia. Now moving on to some Dark of the Moon supplemental media appearances that depict Ironhide with a mask. The Transformers Dark of the Moon movie adaptation Rising Storm and Foundation comics depicted Ironhide with a mask. In addition to this, the various Dark of the Moon storybooks and Dark of the Moon Titan movie comics depicted Ironhide wearing his mask in several of their stories, as well as the Transformers Dark of the Moon Autobots and Decepticons DS games. Now, from here I want to cover the last piece of supplemental media that depicted Ironhide with a mask. And, oddly enough, that would be the Transformers Age of Extinction mobile game. Now, despite Ironhide not being present in Age of Extinction, you could unlock him in this game. His character model, in addition to his G1 color skin, both sported a mask. So, with all that said, you may be wondering why Ironhide's mask has appeared in many of his toys and supplemental media throughout the years, despite him never having it in the film. And though there is no official answer to this at this point in time, this is my best guess. As we know, during the production of the Transformers 2007 movie, supplemental material was created for it during the film's production, not after. Thus, the designers had to refer to early concept art as a reference, explaining why the characters didn't 100% match their on-screen counterparts in the majority of the supplemental media. A prime example of this would be the control art. However, this doesn't explain why the designers continued to give him a mask post-2007. My best guess as to why was the homage to the original concept art. In the case of his Revenge of the Fallen toys, all Ironhide figures that were meant to be accurate to his on-screen appearance such as his Voyager, Robot Replica, and Gimmicky figures all had the movie accurate face. While, on the contrary, all Ironhide figures that were not meant to be accurate to his film design had a mask, those being Off-Road and Recon Ironhide. Hunt for the Decepticons Ironhide would also fall into this category, since he came out a full year after Revenge of the Fallen as part of a subline, where homages and crazy repaints were the norm. This can explain why the majority of repaints for this figure decided to keep the mask. As for his Dark of the Moon toys, this is where the waters get muddied. Since his mainline release had sculpting of his movie-accurate face, yet it was painted black just like the Hunt for the Decepticons figure. His leader class figure would also homage the mask as well, which in hindsight was likely added on as a gimmick, since during this time those were a prominent feature on leader class figures. As for the DS games post-2007, the reason why they likely kept the mask was due to how low res the character models had to be. This can be further backed up since the 2007 DS game had Ironhide's icon with a mask, while the Revenge of the Fallen one didn't. Yet the devs of the game chose to keep the mask on the model anyway, most likely due to polygon count. The Revenge of the Fallen game for the PS3, Xbox 360, and PC wouldn't depict Ironhide with his mask, yet the PS2 and Wii versions might have. However, I cannot confirm this since it's not black and looks closer to his nose than a mask but feel free to let me know what you guys think it's supposed to be. Furthermore, like the Revenge of the Fallen DS game, the Dark of the Moon DS game also kept Ironhide's mask, but the Xbox 360 and PS3 versions didn't. Lastly, as for all the books and comics that depicted him with a mask, I think those were all done as a homage to the concept art. Funny enough, some artists combined Ironhide's mask and mouth as a stylistic choice. And just like that, now you know why Ironhide sometimes sports a battle mask. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you have not already, check out the Tales of Production playlist for some more awesome stories. Also, don't forget to check out Warhammer Chaos and Conquest. Download it now using the link in the description below, or alternatively, scan the QR code on the top left of your screen. But before I go, I want to say thank you to all my Patreons and channel members for supporting the channel. It truly means a lot and keeps my channel running, so a big fat thank you to all of you. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving a like rating because it does help the channel a lot. With that said, hit that outro.